Okay, this is the unboxing video for the XG3 injectable biomagnet. We have two different designs. We have a dielectric, which is our version 2, and we have an axial. And that, all that means is that uh, the device itself is a cylinder, and the actually magnetized cylinders have poles at the ends of the cylinder, and the diametrically magnetized devices are magnetized down the center of the cylinder. So one half of the cylinder is north and the other half is south. So let's go ahead and open these up and we'll take a look at the differences and what's included. The diametric one, we're going to go ahead and do that. So when we open the box, we get our great sticker, of course. That's always a must. It's always included with all our stuff. Um, this is new, actually, as of November 2021. This is our magnetic viewing film. That's what this is here. Uh, this film is actually pretty cool. We'll cover it in just a bit, but it allows you to actually see or visualize magnetic fields. So that's a really cool little accessory that comes with. And then the actual magnet itself and all the stuff in our procedure pouch. And we're going to talk a little bit about the procedure pouch, but there's going to be a link below that goes in depth. Essentially, you don't want to open. That's why we have this, you know, this very obvious sticker here. You don't want to open it. Uh, the stuff inside, the, the pouches inside here are sterile. Uh, and so we protect those fragile sterilization pouches with the procedure bag. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this one open to show you what's inside. Okay. So inside our procedure bag, we have the actual injectable device. And of course, we have to have a, a another sticker on here that just says, hey, this is a magnet. Don't get an MRI with a magnet implant. That's a bad idea. Um, so there's that. And then, of course, this is our standard stuff. So we have our drape. Inside, we have our um, very nice uh, adhesive bandage. Then we have gauze and uh, chlorhexidine wipes and gloves that are not sterile, but Again, if you work with a professional who knows how to use this equipment and gear, uh, they can perform a safe installation with zero risk of infection using non-sterile gloves. So this pouch contains the injector assembly with the magnet inside. You can see there's the needle end there. We're gonna go ahead and open this. But inside of here, before I even open it, I think the, it's kind of interesting because unlike our chip implants that uh, you know they have the chip implant inside the needle and you cannot read it because it's inside the big metal needle, um, this is a magnet, and so you can totally, you know, see what's going on with the viewing film. So this is just, you know, some film, and you can see it's got some scratches, and um, it's been used. But this film, the important difference between this film, which I've used before in the past, and you can see it's kind of damaged, and the actual viewing film that we ship with the magnet is this one is laminated. It's protected against this kind of damage. So, you know, we went a little uh, above and beyond, or a little extra, <laughs> extra mile for you there, just to make sure that your viewing film stays. Um, you know, pristine and uh, it doesn't get scratched up and, and messed up. But you can see, so this is the uh, diametric, the V2, and you can see right here, that's where the magnet is inside of the needle. And you can see the actual, um, you know, the actual diametric magnetization of it being visualized on the film. And there's an interesting thing, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a halo around the outside of the device, and that's that halo is where the magnetic field is bending the the material in the viewing film, and then the dark spot is you know one of the poles of the magnet. So that's what the diametrically magnetized XG3 looks like, kind of just a big dark capsule with a halo around it. Um, alternatively, just to see what it looks like in the actually magnetized version. So here's the injector. You can see it has poles on either side and a gap in the middle where there's, uh, well, I wouldn't say no magnetic field, but the magnetic field is bent so strongly toward the other pole that you can't really see it. That's not visualized there. But uh, again, this has kind of been used and scratched up, so it's kind of hard to see. But we'll go ahead and use the included viewing film. So you can clearly see there's like that line there. Um, and that's where, that's between the two poles on either side of the actually magnetized device. Again, we'll take a look at the versus that, which is very clearly, uh, you know, <laughs> big solid pill shape. So well, actually, we'll keep that in there. So let's go ahead and open this. These are, again, when you, you work with a professional to install, they will handle it carefully. They will properly drop this sterilely onto a magnetic, or onto a, uh, you know, a drape or a field, a working uh, area that's, uh, you know, not been compromised by touching it or anything like that. We're just going to tear this open. And you would never do that if you're actually going to install it. But I want to show you what this looks like. So inside, 
we actually have the magnet device. And this is inside of the same kind of, uh, you know, biosafe glass that we use for our X series chip implants. This is just a magnet. And you can see it sticks <laughs> to the needle, so I have to remove it physically. But that is it. That's the actual implantable device. And just like our other implants, you can put it subdermally. Some people put it in the hand. Some people put it uh, further up in the arm. They put it in different places. Uh, but that, you know, in terms of where the best location for something like this is, depends on your application, but also on input from your installer. The professional installer should be uh, working with you to find a, a safe, uh, logical, and <laughs> good place to put the magnet implant. So that is the XG3. And let's see here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So these, these are surgical scissors, and it's quite strong. It's holding them up no problem. Now, of course... I want to say a bit about the, uh, the the function of strength, so magnetic field strength for these kinds of things. Now, this magnet uh, device is inside of the glass, so there's some space between the magnet surface and the surface of the scissors. That strength, just like um, light or any, any kind of transmission, that strength drops off exponentially as you move further away. That's why you can have something here close and it's not really affected too much, but you get too close and it snaps. Um, that means that if you p position this or place this under tissue where there's a lot of fat or there's a lot of tissue between the magnet and whatever you're trying to lift, the diametric, the V2, is designed for lifting. It means that there's a massive surface area on one side of the cylinder that is all dedicated to one pole. So it, you know, it basically maximizes your lift capabilities, whereas the axial is more designed for sensing. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But the point is that if you have more material, tissue or whatever, between the magnet and the object you're lifting, it will appear to have less strength. And that's because you're increasing the distance. So um, moments after installation, you're going to have swelling, you're going to have fluid. Um, you want to make sure, again, to place it in a position uh, that has you know minimal tissue between magnet surface and the device that you want to, or object that you want to lift or interact with. That's an important factor, but also healing and you know kind of natural processes need to take place to get you the appropriate amount of, of healing and reduce the space between the magnet and whatever you're interacting with. So that's the diametric. The axial device, again, has poles uh, on either end that are magnetized. So rather than you know half this cylinder, it's the pole is at one end and the other end. And the idea there is that if you're placing this into the body, I mean, people put it in fingers. Again, it's, it's a rough one. Definitely work with your professional installer. Don't just put this in yourself. Definitely do not DIY any of our stuff. Work with our professionals because they will help you do this safely. But um, if you want to experience like a sensing application where you are uh, feeling magnetic fields, so there's, let's say there's a, a magnet or an electromagnet or a motor or something that's generating magnetic field in, in the vicinity where you are uh, or you're interacting with it in some way, essentially the idea is that a, a magnet, an XG3 that has magnetization on the poles, axially magnetized, is going to move and vibrate and tilt and interact with that field much more readily than a magnet that's diametrically magnetized. And the movement, of course, is what's going to trigger little uh, tactile nerve endings where you place the magnet to fire. And then that's going to tell your brain, hey, there's movement, there's activity here. I'm sensing that there's a magnetic field in the area that I'm interacting with. So that's the idea behind the axial design versus a diametric. Now, of course, the axial can also lift objects. The diametric can also sense fields, but the idea is that you're going to get better performance for sensing out of the axial, better lifting performance out of the diametric. So that is the XG3, and I hope you enjoyed this video. The site might be called Dangerous Things, but remember, safety first.